was here somewhere. No, no. Ah. I knew I'd find that door. who invited us in. Quite a good friend of mine, actually. Here we are, in his living room. Let me show you around. This rucksack has everything you'll need to go exploring. If you click on it, then that's exactly what you'll do. If you click on this cart, I'll take you on a guided tour of the wood where the gnomes can be found. You'll see where they live and how they work and play. The tour will be just like watching television. If you click on this lantern, and then on either the cart or the rucksack, I'll explain to you how they work. The way out of the gnome's house is through the door. Of course. You'll be your own size again until the time comes for your next visit. This woodland gnome is 275 years old and in the prime of life. Gnomes can easily live to be 400 years old. Here you can see how big a gnome is, or rather how small he really is. Though perhaps it's just humans who are too big. You can recognize a gnome right away by his red pointed cap. He wears this all the time so that birds of prey will not mistake him for a strange kind of mouse. The pointed cap is made from felt. It is completely solid. Gnome children are given their caps at an early age and wear them all their lives. As it wears out on the inside, it gets a new layer of felt on the outside. And so, as the gnome grows, his cap grows. The pointed cap protects the gnome's head from falling branches, acorns and hailstones. He never takes it off. And I'll tell you why. A long time ago, when... So now you know. He would rather be seen with a bare bottom than be caught without his cap. Gnomes are not creatures of the day, so if you want to find one, you'll have to search at night. The gnome can forecast changes in the weather from air currents and with the help of birds. It's not clear how this is done. He doesn't like to talk about it, or else he says that it just seems to be a sixth sense, or he feels it in his bones, or he's always had the knack. What is known is that he determines the level of humidity by studying the minuscule stomata on the undersides of leaves. The gnome couldn't care less if there's rain, snow, hail or mist. When it's very cold, he tucks his hands under his beard. And if it's icy, he puts on a pair of skates. Because he's so small, he luckily stands little chance of being struck by lightning. 
Storms present another danger, though. The risk of being blown away by a fierce gust of wind. Forecasting snow is very important. He must take steps to ensure that entrances and caves are not snowed up. In the mountains, he, like the animals, knows the danger of avalanches. So he's especially wary of untrodden hills of snow. It's best to stay well away from these hillsides. It's not all beer and skittles being a gnome. Some people believe that gnomes change into toadstools when they're in danger. This may well be true, but no one has ever proved it. Old oaks, or quercus as botanical gnomes say, often carry the runes of many gnomes who were born in the same year. Each year, during the midwinter solstice, the gnome visits his tree and makes a mark on it. In this way, he can tell exactly how old he is. A wild boar. People are scared to death of them. But they don't frighten gnomes, oh no. The gnome is good friends with most animals. He speaks their language and understands their problems. The animals always know where to find him when they need help. And they are always ready to lend him a hand. In gratitude for services rendered, the deer gives the gnome a potato from his food store. The gnome hates swimming more than anything else, thanks to his fear of going underwater. Hydrophobia. And so, the help of an otter is always welcome. With his head high above the water, the otter enjoys acting as a ferry boat. This badger has caught his eye on a broken branch in the dark. Now the cornea is being stitched. The gnomes have known about acupuncture for thousands of years. They use needles to numb the left side of the badger's head. Deer can suffer terribly from horseflies. They lay their eggs in the deer's nose, and the larvae work their way into the throat and settle there. The gnome removes these intruders with special pincers. The gnome starts to build about 15 to 20 years before he gets married. First, he looks for a place where the lichen grows, because the air is purest there. Then, he looks for a suitable tree and, with the help of a rabbit, digs an underground passage to a second tree. There, they make a hollow space and that becomes his house. He may have to travel great distances to find a girl he likes. He does his best to win her over with lots of presents. They get married as soon as her parents agree. The wedding ceremony takes place at night at the bride's birthday tree. In the presence of their parents and a few close friends, they promise to be faithful to each other. After a reception in the new house, the young couple leave on their honeymoon. Animals take care of the journey. Wild geese, swans, cranes. Foxes, otters and even wolves in Siberia. They all do their share. When a gnome boy is 13, his father takes him out and teaches him to identify mushrooms and herbs. How to run fast, how to run in zigzags over open country, how to whistle to warn other gnomes, 
and how to reflect sun and moonlight to pass messages to other gnomes in times of need. In the northernmost tip of Asia, you may meet the Siberian gnome. He spends a lot of time with trolls, and so he can't really be trusted. A troll is stupid, primitive, and will believe anything. But the gnome has a great deal of trouble with him. If ever a troll should catch a gnome, then the most terrible things can happen. One of the nastiest troll tricks is called sharpening the gnome. He also likes to hold a gnome close to a flame so that he catches fire. Then he throws him to the other trolls to put the flames out. Locking him up, holding a knife to his throat, putting him in a treadmill, and making him dance on the end of a chain. In short, anything that can be invented by a diseased brain. They'll never kill a gnome, though he may be badly injured. Luckily, he's usually clever enough to escape. The Snot Gurgle. He stinks and dribbles, and his hair is full of lice. A gnome who falls into his hands has little chance of staying alive. An elf is a not unpleasant, teasing ghost between 10 and 30 centimeters high. There are male, female, and neuter elves. Sometimes their teasing can have serious consequences, but the elf can never see any harm in it. For instance, they've lured this man into a swamp. Giggling can be heard from the children's bed and the sound of snoring from their parents. There is much turning and shuffling in the vole basket as they try to get comfortable. The watch cricket chirrups happily in the hall. Everything is safe. There may be villains roaming outside. There may be storms, rain and tempest. But a stout tree is standing above the sturdy gnome house. The watch cricket is on guard. The mole and rabbit will immediately sound the alarm if the need arises. Nothing bad can possibly happen. <laughs>